What's up, guys? On today's episode of Santa Cruz Medicinals Radio, I got my brother from another mother. I've known this dude for a long time. Austin, the Marine, is what we refer to him as. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, this episode is brought to you by Santa Cruz Paleo and Santa Cruz Medicinals. This is our chocolate protein. You can get it on Amazon right now. It's a grass fed, grass finished beef isolate protein. It's absolutely amazing. So type in Santa Cruz Paleo on Amazon if you want to support. But yeah, Austin drove up from San Diego. What did we do? We went and surfed. Surfed, got some sun, worked out, ate amazing, nourishing food. The usual, honestly. The usual. We yeah. had steaks. Whew. Loving you know, the life. A lot of steak. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some fruit. It just, was nice, yeah. Just the staples, avocado, rice, honey. We surfed um, beautiful waves at Privates in Santa mm-hmm. Cruz. Mm-hmm. Kind of a smaller day, like two to three foot. Yeah, which is hard on them shorter boards, but... You know, we're getting better and we're, hopefully we getting longer. We were catching some waves. We were having a good time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, why I wanted to have you on is just to sort of discuss with people, like, how we live. And it's a pretty easy discussion to have because it's just literally what we do every day. But I think in today's world, it's really unique and different. Um, so I guess what I'll ask you is, like, how did you get into all this um, in terms of health and wellness and to where you are at today? It's funny that you mentioned that it was like, we're like the few and far between with how we eat, but yet thousands of years we've been eating like this. It's just yes. as of recently, uh, all this processed food coming in, it's like so easy, so accessible to eat crappy that now most people eat pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and including me, I used to eat pretty bad as well. So like, especially in the Marine Corps, we are fed mass produced food, like eggs from f- freaking powder, mm. you know, uh, chicken that looked like it could last for like three years just on that plate alone. It's just really sketch. So even during my most active times, like physically active, I was fed like not nourishing food at all. I had gut problems. Uh, My stool was not good. My energy was not good. My sleep was all right. I mean, my sleep was only okay because I was doing so much physical activity. But now, I mean, I've also eaten a ton of fast food and just all this kind of stuff. But now I've been more on an animal-based diet, you know, fruit, meat, uh, honey, raw dairy. Um, I feel so much better. I Mm -hmm. feel so much more energy. I feel so much more alive, connected, connected with myself, the earth. Um, and I just feel like a lot more stronger, which feels really good. Honestly, That's amazing. It's crazy to to think about that. We feed our soldiers horrible food. I mean, you guys probably get the same food as like, there's this, when I was in college, like the college dorm food was from this company, Sodexo. Mm -hmm. Um, which and then there's also cisco Cisco. or yeah cisco is the company i think s-y-s-c-o not the tech company Mm -hmm. and they do a lot of like mass produced food for like prisons dorm rooms you know but like okay so you're in okay so you're in the marines like you know it's like a you know say you're going through training you're on the east coast right Mm -hmm. and like they have you do crazy shit you're running you're doing pull-ups you're doing push-ups you're doing all that and then you go to the dining hall i'm assuming and Mm -hmm. like what what are they feeding uh it's i mean whatever they make that day but it's all literally from cisco it's all like horribly processed foods and like if it's uh, a whole food like chicken or uh, any type of meat, it is the lowest quality. You yeah. know for damn sure that that meat was fed corn and soy and wheat, and that is it. It's the cheapest stuff <clears throat> ever. All and, cooked in seed oils. Oh, oh, for sure, and without a doubt. And like, I get it because they had to feed so many people. So like, you know, our food bill, if they were to actually feed us good, would probably be just as high as our. Yeah, and but you know bill. what's so crazy to think about? I've been thinking about that a lot lately because it is pricier the way we eat and we're both people that are willing to invest in our health because of the benefits that it gives like Mm -hmm. yes like i i wasn't always making good money and i would still spend money on my health Mm -hmm. because it allows you to do more like it's crazy even when i was just like working in like sales like people are like by lunchtime they're just like crashing i'm just like okay like i feel fine i can do more emails Mm -hmm. do more calls you feel better when you're healthy um but what I was, uh, yeah, it's it's so, yeah, it's insane to me. Um, but what I was going to say is, like, our government does subsidize corn and wheat, mm-hmm. especially. So, like, it's very strange to me when people are like, oh, these, these foods are so, you know, so much cheaper, the processed foods. It's like, for sure, but the government's also taking your tax money, mm-hmm. giving it to people to grow corn, soy, and wheat. Because that, and then that is then food that those companies buy. And then you know, Kraft Nabisco buys a lot of corn, soy, mm-hmm. and wheat at a, basically a discounted rate, subsidized by our tax dollars. And then they're able to make, you know, corn syrup or, you know, soybean mm-hmm. oil or whatever. 
I wonder what would happen if our government funneled some money to help subsidize actual like healthy foods. I'm not saying they'd be like way cheaper. Processed foods would be cheaper, mm-hmm. but it could bring down the price. I mean, shit. Oh, most definitely. And not only is it the health of our people that is detrimental, but unfortunately, the monocropping only growing one type of crop on this agricultural land is horrible for the environment, horrible for the land, like the fertility of the yeah. soil. Uh, and it's just like every time they grow a, a harvest of corn, they're digging up that soil, putting in synthetic nutrients that is going right into the plant they're growing. And that soil is dying, dying, dying. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, most of the Midwest right now is unfertile soil. Yeah. And that's not being talked about, which is mind blowing to me. Yeah. We've, we've wrecked our, you know, and so many people go, oh, well, I, I eat, you know, vegetarian or whatever. And they're eating corn and wheat products. And it's like, that's not good for the environment. No. And also to all you vegetarians or vegans out there, if you eat corn, soy, and wheat, you are responsible for the death of animals. If you've ever mm-hmm. been to one of those farms, they till that land, they run tractors over it. There's rabbits, there's mice, They not to mention all the bird species that they displace. So mm-hmm. like, if you really wanted to do it, perfectly ethical, which I don't think any modern human can be perfectly ethical, um... You're not doing it if you're eating soy, corn, and wheat. So, yeah. And that's unfortunately the big corporations, you know, beyond me and stuff, try to preach like, oh, it's the best for the environment. It's the best for the future. No, it's definitely not. And actually, the best thing is regenerative agriculture, Yep. grass-fed meat, because they're moving these cows from plot to plot to plot. They're allowing their poop to regenerate the land, regenerate the carbon in the soil, the microbiome in the soil Mm -hmm. to make it even more fertile. So when they rotate these cows from one plot to the other, it's allowing the, the land to regrow and to replenish its nutrients. So it's like, yeah, it's unfortunate that big marketing has totally skewed our most people's opinion of what is 100%. good for the environment. They're marketing a processed food. <laughs> That's what's going on. I mean, uh, beyond beef and all these, they're, they're heavily processed foods. So we have the same people that have been preaching, hey, don't eat processed foods. Now they're switching their tune. They're going, eat our processed foods. It's totally fine. Eat these processed seed oils. Seed oils are good for you is a common narrative. Yet these same doctors will, they'll say, oh yeah, eat whole foods, fruits and vegetables. Why is that good for you? Because it's unprocessed food. And now you're suddenly telling us, don't eat the unprocessed fats because you know how to get olive oil. You can you can do it manually. You can mm-hmm. get olives from a tree. You can put them in a vat and you can put a like a silver thing that, you know, you squish down, you can mm-hmm. get the oil like with a ladle. There's no processing with that. And coconut oil very similar process. Um, ghee is just clarified butter. That's, you know, a minimally processed food. It's completely mm-hmm. natural. Yet they're like, "Oh yeah, no, seed oils are good. They're heavily heavily processed." So it's crazy to me. I mean, my whole thing that I tell people, the first thing, the first step is don't eat any processed food. Mm -hmm. And people hear that all the time. That is difficult to do. Very. Especially when the average American, that is all they eat. When they go to a grocery store, they go to the middle of the grocery store. They never go on the outside, the boundary of the grocery store where all the refrigerated, normal, whole foods are. It's just so much more accessible, cheaper to get artificial processed foods. Yep. Um, It's simple. It's like, Whole foods, not the store, whole foods, as in just a single ingredient food, Yeah, uh, is the best for you. I mean, something from the earth is usually pretty good for us. Usually man-made stuff isn't so good for us. Like, that's yeah. a typical good rule of thumb. Do you think people's taste buds are hijacked? I think that's a huge issue with mm. young kids. Like, um, I think it used to be an issue with, with me. You know, I, I used to eat candy, just like, whatever, just eat whatever. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I don't remember loving like a piece of fresh fruit as I, as much as I do now that my taste buds are like completely reset. If I get like a good mango, I was just eating an apple and I was saying to you guys like, this is the best apple. <laughs> it was so good. Hell yeah. And you get those like complex notes, almost tastes like candy. Mm. But yeah, do you think people's taste buds are just like wrecked? I think the taste buds and then also our gut microbiome, because it's like when we eat these unhealthy foods, there's more neurons in our gut than there are in our brain, which mm-hmm. is wild. So like our gut controls a lot of the way we think. So when we're eating these processed foods, these artificial sugars, it's gearing our brain to think like it's kind of if you look at it on an, under an MRI of sugars and like processed sugars, it lights up your brain the same way or similar ways that freaking cocaine does. Yeah. It is wild. And so our, our body like naturally is geared toward eating more and more and more of it. 100%. I mean, and, and you know what? It's smart evolution. Like from the anthropology side you would need to stock up on sugar Mm. in your body because it was very hard to come by. Mm. So if you came across a fruit tree, you know, some blackberries like we have growing out here, like naturally, 
you would eat as much of that as you can mm -hmm. at that time because you do not know when your next source of carbohydrates is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, our ancestors were probably scavenging for a, a long time, and then we started killing animals, smoking that meat, preserving it possibly with some salts, um, and being able to smoke that meat. Uh, making traditional foods like pemmican, where you're basically pounding down meat, berries, salt, and meat fat. Um, and Native Americans, they've, they've even shown, would like, roll that up into, like, an animal sack. Like, you eat, literally using the intestines as, like, wow. a bag. Mm. And they would eat that food. It was, a you know, pemmican, and it allowed them to travel for so long. But, like, yeah, if you came across some honey or something, you would devour it. But now it's available every single mm -hmm. day to us. So, you know, I've even been experimenting with that more where, like, I'll do these kind of big like carb refeeds almost to simulate mm. like what our ancestors might have gone through with like eating a bunch of protein one day mm -hmm. and maybe even having like a, a lighter calorie day where like you're kind of like working and then you find some like, you know, a big batch of honey and some fruit and you just go off because I think for people, most people, they're going off every single day mm -hmm. and they're consuming way too much fructose, way too much processed sugar, way too much carbohydrates even. Like, yeah, I mean, you... you are in the camp of like earn your carbohydrates oh most definitely i mean i think it should be carbohydrates should be a pre-fuel to your workout and a post fuel to your workout and other than that you shouldn't if you're not doing an insanely like high caloric activity you don't necessarily need it you know and if you're trying to gain muscle and get bigger and all that carbs are great but yeah. you know for the average person that's just trying to maintain a healthy diet healthy body composition I would only carb up before and after. Yeah, it's like if you're working out, you know, I do a good amount of carbs right now. Mm -hmm. Like I am not skimping on the carbohydrates because no. I'm doing like a lifting program right now and like I'm, I'm working out a lot. But if I wasn't, if I were to tailor back my exercise routine, mm -hmm. I would also limit the carbohydrates because that's what really signals to your body to store fat. Obviously, the first thing, the most important thing is you consume more calories and you burn, your body is going to add, you know, fat and mm -hmm. adipose tissue. But... Overall, I think the carbohydrates and why keto works so well for so many people, mm -hmm. although I'm not, I don't do keto, you don't do keto. I think keto works so well for so many people because of our hunger hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Mm. Ghrelin makes you feel hungry. Leptin makes you feel full. And when we eat satiating foods with healthy proteins, healthy fats, we're going to be able to decrease those hunger hormones and feel more satiated. So I think it's like, yes, the calories in, calories out thing is true. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard if you want to just start your day with a sugar-filled cereal and you go, this is this many calories. Your hormones are going to be going crazy and you're going to be hungry. You, you, can, you can stave that off and hit your calorie goals and do your body composition stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be much easier if you have like a fat-fueled coffee with some protein or some eggs. You're going to feel way better. I remember I used to eat oatmeal almost every morning. And I remember you telling me back in the day, like, yo, that's not good for you, gluten head. I remember you calling me, like, yeah, gluten yeah. head and stuff. I used to eat a oh, ton gluten of gluten, head. Yeah. believe me. Well, oatmeal is gluten-free, but it has similar proteins to, to gluten. But and, yeah. I remember, like, literally being super hungry, like, an hour after, maybe two hours after, and not craving, like, healthy foods at all. And I think what's crazy is that some of the smartest people in the world are one, making tech more addictive and two, making food more addictive, yeah. more palatable for our taste buds. Yep. So we really keep coming back and it's just, it's unfortunate. And it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of strength and consistency to slowly wean out these bad things. Cause it's, it's addictive to our tastes and that fires endorphins in our brain to want to keep going more yeah. and more and more. And it's just not healthy. I always talk about the, you know, from the anthropology side, again, like the wiring of the human brain, I think that's what got me really interested in health. Like a lot of people just don't realize how long we have been around as humans or human-like creatures mm -hmm. and how that wired our brain. And it is evolution. For millions of years, we lived as hunter-gatherers and people say, well, that's not good. It's good we evolved out of that. For sure. Great we evolved out of that, but it your brain hasn't evolved. This is why we have these reward mechanisms built into our body when you can I can describe it in a basic way. When you sit down to eat a meal in front of a fire, mm. why does that feel so good? Mm. You're tapping into this this system that our brain has developed for survival. And I think a lot of people are going away from that and they're not using these basic things that we've evolved with, like sun, lifting heavy objects, exercise. It's not that our hunter-gatherer ancestors exercised. They had to move mm -hmm. in, order to st in order to survive, to mm -hmm. keep our bodies alive. So to put this reward mechanism in our brain, dopamine, serotonin, 
of, hey, you have to sort of live like this. Sorry, that's how we're wired. We've only been living like we're living for a couple hundred years. Less with the t- yeah. new technology. Like, look at all this stuff around us. Like, this is, you know, 50, 60 years old. Yeah. The, so mm-hmm. that's what I try to explain to people a lot. Um, and, and you're very good at tapping into that. Like, we're just wired a certain way, man. Mm-hmm. And well, we could say that we, you know, evolved out of these certain patterns, but we really haven't. Like you said, our brain's still wired that way. But yet we've evolved into this tech, into being glorified, to being inside and the sun being demonized and lifting being too alpha masculine or whatever. And it's like, you know, if you go back to the root of things of how human beings and plants and just life in general, how they operate, it's from good quality sun, good quality food, community, you know, even plants like to be next to each other. Like that's how they thrive. They, yeah. You know, and it's like. We've gotten away from these things, especially the past few years, community, Mm -hmm. all these things that make us human beings better as a collective, we've gotten away from. Dude, and the community thing is is so interesting to talk about because, like, I am so grateful for, like, our friend group that we have. And what I see is, like, you know, you're 29, right? I'm Mm -hmm. 30. Joe's 29. Like, Connor's 30. Like, we're all, like, entering our 30s and... Dude, so many men have just lost their, they don't have any friends mm-hmm. whatsoever. They don't have like a group of guys. And that is very tough, dude. Yeah. It's not a place I'd want to be. It's not, again, it's not natural to have like no other like male friends to talk to. And I think it's something that's just not discussed a lot. Um, it's tough, man. Like so many people just communicate through text nowadays. Mm-hmm. They don't really ever see each other. It's, it's really, really it's sad, sad to see, you know, yeah. people just, or they, you know, they, sometimes people move to another city and then they just don't make the effort to like go like meet people there because it's hard. Or you, and yeah, I mean, or you try to meet people through the phone and it's just not the same. And even like social media, like having these messages with people, it's not the same as like yeah. me and you, like eye contact, like deep conversations, like, dude, this is what I'm going through today. I kind of need help on this. Or this is what I'm thinking in the future. Let's support each other in this. Like there's just so much. Unfortunately, it's once again, technology has kind of made it easy for us to sit back, be comfortable and not like, it's kind of hard to go out in public and meet new people or put yourself out there. Like, believe me, when I first moved out to the Bay Area, I met you like years ago, but even then it like took me a while to be introduced to this friend group and all that. And it just, it's kind of, it's difficult, but at the same time, it is so needed for us human beings. Like you got to think about it. Who built this house? Who built this equipment? It was other human beings. And like, as much as we want to think like we're in this alone, no, we're all in this together. Like there's people that built this freaking floor under us that we never have met, we would never will meet. But like we need each other as a society to be yeah. to keep growing. And it's un- dude, most people are literally like aren't seeing like like they're seeing like one or two people a day. And when I was mm-hmm. I mean like they're interacting with like one or two people a day, like face to face, sometimes less. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of men who live alone nowadays in an apartment. They might work remote mm-hmm. and they might not, not interact with somebody the whole day. And it's that it's scary to me. And I, you know, we see the suicide rates and men are insanely Huge. high, especially after COVID because isolation. Mm-hmm. It's like, again, that's the primal reward system. We are designed to hang out with other people, mm-hmm. you know? And like, I always make an effort to like, you know, try to tell people like that they, you know, like other guys like, dude, come over, watch some UFC fights. Mm-hmm. I'm always meeting new people and bringing them over. Sometimes if I don't like them, I'm not going to invite them over yeah. again, whatever. <laughs> but, like, I'm willing to give people a shot to, like, come hang out and, and kick it because, like, I think a lot of people are lonely. Oh, dude, a lot of people are lonely, and especially after the past few years because, you know, it's like, it's just, I don't know, society kind of has deemed it, like, socializing is sketchy now. Yeah, like, yeah they, you know, I mean, it's they really do. Yeah. You know, and it's like, no, we need this. We need this interaction with people. We need these conversations. We need this connection with other people, yeah. especially to like be supportive, you know, of each other and yeah. then to, to level up with each other too. I've been telling uh, a lot of the young kids that follow me to get involved with communities and go ahead, make it your personality. If the community is, um, something that's truly beneficial, mm. like jujitsu, like surfing, um, there, I mean, dude, so like uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a dude at my jujitsu gym and he, I, I'm not the type to like ever like go at anybody, but he was kind of like making fun of like a young white belt who came in who was like dipped out in all the jiu-jitsu gear. And I very respectfully, I just like kind of corrected him. I'm like, dude, like, yeah, totally. But like, dude, so what if he makes his personality that? 
Yeah. That's way better than making his personality. I don't know what kids are into nowadays. Right. You know, like Minecraft or something. Right. Or like, dude, people make their personality far darker things than that. Right. So I was just sort of saying to you, I'm like, yeah, yeah, but dude, there's dude, plenty of other kids his age are into way worse stuff. If he wants to wear like a Gordon Ryan jujitsu shirt, which is like, you know, it's kind of like that thing of like, bro, like, why are you wearing a Gordon Ryan shirt? He's like the best guy in jujitsu. But it's like. I am never going to tease anybody or make fun of anybody when they try to make their personality something that's beneficial. A healthier yeah. a healthier choice. And that's why when we're out on the water surfing, I feel like we're both very protective. Like we saw a dude getting yelled at, mm-hmm. and we were both like, dude, that's not, not cool. Not cool. Yeah. Like, for sure, don't paddle out at waves like you, you know. you Don't cut anybody off. Yeah, Forget all it. that type of stuff. But, like, that community needs to be way more inclusive. So does jujitsu. But, like, all that type of stuff, like, find something whether it's a sport basketball mm-hmm. mountain biking whatever you want to do mm-hmm. find that and go deep into it i don't care if you suck at it mm-hmm. you know that's fine just like find those things well there's so many positive aspects to like sports in general and even if it's recreational sports because one you're getting outside two you're moving three you're with other human beings like yep. communicating having this like similarity which is great honestly one of the best things for my mental health this year has been supportive friends and family and getting out the the non-supportive people and the non-supportive family or friends and family yeah and honestly for for me it's been so helpful and so like it aligns me and my purpose and like who i am as a person when i have people around me that support me like no matter what i do no matter how i feel you know so i'm really lucky and really grateful for our friends and you've gotten way more into surfing this year which i love um I love. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so fun. I mean, yeah, talk about that. Like, what's that been like? Like, you've been getting way better. Well, I'm glad you mentioned, like, the people that just started out with jujitsu, mountain biking, or whatever. Any of the pros you see, they have started, they were a beginner one day. 100%. Like, I am still not that good at surfing. I picked it up about a year and a half ago, and I've been really heavy out of the past, like, few months, like, almost every day surfing. And I'm still only, like, intermediate, but I have so much fun out there. Yeah. One, I'm off my phone. Mm-hmm. No, no connection to anybody else besides the other surfers in the water, me and that board in the water. Yep. And it's amazing. And then two, I'm in the sun. Three, I'm moving. And I'm moving in a way that's like really different. I'm using a lot of my posterior chain, a lot of my back. Yeah. Glutes a little bit, shoulders, chest. It's just a way different like movement. I'm like more agile, more mobility from it. It's a lot of fun. I love yeah. it. And then also, I can go around the world and experience these yep. beautiful places that have beautiful surf breaks and meet other cool surfers. And usually surfers are people that do stuff like mountain biking, for instance. These people are really conscious about the earth and like how they go about buying certain stuff and sustainable things. So yeah. it's like you get to hear other people's perspective on like their healthy life. Yeah, you know? 100%. It's, like, it's, it's such a good community. And like, yeah, that's why like, you know... I want more people to get into surfing. Mm-hmm. Do it right, of course, but like, I hate when I see someone like bullying somebody who's like just getting into activity. It's like, bro, yeah, you know, like, it's like, dude, like with jujitsu, like if anybody like makes fun of the white belts or whatever, it's like, bro, you, like you were there, y- once. you're a white belt, like bring Mason Fowler or Benji in here and uh-huh. have them roll with you, like you're a white belt, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, <laughs> unless you're you know the top five in the world, like you shouldn't be like you know, so yeah, talking, yeah, shit. it's crazy, so. I think there's a big problem, though, with, like, young men especially. It's just, like... And, I mean, people DM me all the time, dude, and they voice these issues to me all the time. And then I've also gotten the DMs, which I love getting, where people are like, dude, I had no idea about any of this. Mm. I started eating, like, an, an animal-based, unprocessed foods diet. Mm-hmm. I started working out, and people send me before and after photos and all that shit, and, like... Amazing. It's insane. It's really insane. It's crazy that, like, I'm like, damn... I'm letting people know about this. That's awesome, but it's also kind of concerning in the world. Like, my black. There's no, no, not a lot of people are talking about this. No, they're pushed like Kim Kardashian Beyond Beef ads mm-hmm. or it's, something. It's profit over people, unfortunately, with big corporations, and they control the marketing on most everything you see, whether it's YouTube ads, commercials, all this kind of stuff. I'm glad you brought up young men because it's like, it's one. The newer generation, the young men, are surrounded with tech. They don't really go outside often. Once again, we're, we're mentioning the same pillars. If yeah. you know, you kind of hear the same stuff. But what is the best thing you would recommend for a young man or woman that wants to get on a healthier track? Like, one of, what's one of the easier things, a simpler thing that they could swap or add a good healthy habit? Like, what would you suggest? Yeah, them? I think I think the two things that I would 
but I'll call it three things I would suggest for every young man is one, you should lift weights and learn how to lift weights because of the hormonal effects, because of the effects on how your body looks. I mean, let's be real. That is, that is huge. Longevity. Your body composition, longevity, it's going to make you look better. You're going to feel better. And being your in brain. the gym is just going to make you feel way better. Mm-hmm. And you get the hormonal effects of weightlifting. You get the testosterone release. Mm-hmm. You get all those benefits. Two, I would highly recommend joining either a jujitsu gym, starting surfing, doing one of these sort of difficult sports. Mm-hmm. Wrestling is a great one because that brotherhood and that like community with those activities mm-hmm. is huge. And there's going to be so much benefit through there. Um, and then comes diet, eating unprocessed foods. Just try for what I tell people lately is try for 30 days. Mm. Try not eating a processed food for this 30 days of your mm. life. It's not like you're going to die. Right. If it's a bit more money, whatever, save up for a month and then try eating unprocessed food mm-hmm. for 30 days. Try doing meat and fruit for 30 days. Just mm-hmm. see, you know, yeah, I eat veggies. Like you can eat veggies, like whatever, but just try one of these things, you know, right. te- test yourself. Like people don't do this nowadays. They don't run like we're always running like little experiments on mm-hmm. ourselves. Like, what if I do this weightlifting method for two weeks? Let's see how I feel. Okay, then you're you're tweaking that. Like, if you're always like working on yourself, you don't get stagnant and and die. Mm-hmm. So that's what I recommend for people. Just like, yeah, do the work. I love that, and I think for me, I think what I've seen best with people is not subtracting out something they're normally doing because our brain automatically thinks, oh, I'm not allowed to eat a mango. I want a fucking mango yeah. now uh add in a good habit so like instead of subtracting that uh oatmeal that you eat every morning how about drinking two glasses of water every single morning before you do anything for two weeks you know start small and then grow big you know and it's like really hard to go zero to 100 it's hard to like sustain habits like that so like start off small and just compound like build those good and stack those good habits if you will yeah yeah, hundred percent, dude. I think people sometimes see where I'm at now, and like I have like you know my kitchen, and I can buy like good food. But like, dude, I ate seed oils when I didn't have like access to all this. It's hard, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. You got to pop into Chipotle, you got to go to the Whole Foods Hot Bar, whatever it is, you know what I mean. And like, I didn't always have a, a close to perfect diet at mm-hmm. all. But I'm telling you, if you stay healthy, life's gonna be way easier, and you'll be able to grow into these things. Like mm-hmm. where you know I have the house now, and like you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. I can live how I want to live. I think a lot of people are also under the thumb of their parents. They get a lot of DMs where they go, my parents buy unprocessed foods. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm, you know, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And what I say to them is just like, just do what you can. Mm -hmm. Then work out. Work out a bunch, you know. Try to eat as good as you can. I don't think it'd be unreasonable to tell your parents if they're hitting the grocery store and they have money and they're just buying processed foods, say, hey, can you get me some chicken, some Mm -hmm. rice, and some veggies? Go with them to go shopping or something like that, you know. Yeah, that's tough. Being under a parent's roof, not having money to do this. I wanted to bring up food prices because I believe the way we eat is similar priced, if not better priced than most places. If you're good, if you're to go out to eat, yeah. And I'm not talking like a sit down restaurant. Like if I were to go to Chipotle, it's gonna cost me twelve to sixteen dollars yeah. to get a normal meal that I feel like nourished afterward, nourished full, I guess mm-hmm. if you will. But what I eat every day, it's very very similar. It's like. 80% of this most of the time is rice, grass-fed ground beef, avocado, honey, blueberries, or some yeah. type of other fruit. That cost me usually, if you were to like dissect it, six to like eight bucks. Yeah. Like honestly. It's not that expensive. I think people, I mean, I don't know what it is, but people just have tried to label this diet as very expensive and like, yeah, man, I'm doing well now. I'll get steaks. Mm-hmm. You don't have to eat steak. No. You can get ground beef. You can get chicken thighs. You can find deals on wild fish. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes wild fish is like eleven per pound. It's not crazy. It's not like some crazy. You can get canned sardines. So you have protein sources right there. Mainly grass fed ground beef. If you find a deal on it, or not grass fed ground beef. Like I did a video on Trader Joe's. They have mm-hmm. ground beef. Looks good. It's four ninety nine a pound. Mm-hmm. So right there, when you eat those foods and you throw in fruits, vegetables, something like white rice or sweet potatoes, you're talking. You know, it's not an expensive no, diet at no. all. Um, and those foods are extremely satiating too. So when you eat like a pound of beef, Uh you know, it's fills you up. Yes. Dude, you can eat a bag of potato chips like that. Try eating one whole potato. It takes a lot longer. It's not as palatable, you know, and even like going to a fast food restaurant like McDonald's or whatever, I would probably spend eight to 12 bucks. And yet again, I think my normal average meal costs less than that. 
and it's so much more nourishing. Yeah. And like you said, if you can't afford grass fed, normal ground beef is still way better than any processed. Yeah, food. I eat normal beef all the time. You know, of course, like you know, everybody. You know, don't sue them. Don't sue me. <laughs> But, like, of course, I'm going to post when I get a nice grass-fed ribeye. Mm-hmm. That's a treat for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to post that. And when I get my just normal ground beef sometimes, yeah, sometimes I'm not going to post that. Or I'm just, like, you know, making some burgers, mm-hmm. just getting the fuel. So, yeah, I think it's all about finding what works for you. Um, I want to, you know, speaking of young men, so say there's young men watching this, um, and they go, wow, awesome, the Marines, so cool. And they want to go into um, the armed forces. Mm. Would you recommend it for a young mm. person looking into that? That's really tough. I guess it depends on what they what they want out of it, what they believe their future is to be. Uh, for me, it was a really, really tough experience during that time. But now looking back on it, I would 100% do it again. It changed me from a boy to a man so quick. It gave me so much discipline, so much wisdom in certain areas of my life, uh, communication, grit, mm-hmm. um, just perseverance, um, communication, survivability, just weird random stuff but it's like really turned me into the man i am today now i learned a lot of bad stuff from it too like pulling away from any emotions not knowing how to tap into that at all being super hyper independent all this kind of stuff but regardless i think especially like kids that don't have like uh they can't go to school or they don't know what job they want to go into Mm -hmm. yet or they really don't know and they want to kind of gain some like skill have four years of them like completely set up you got college after all that kind of stuff, because if you do four years in the military, you get your GI Bill, which pays for college. I think that's really good for you. Now, be wary, like the certain job you choose, it could be more related to combat and you can get sent out and it's a lot more risky. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really dependent on where you see yourself, what you have going on in your life currently, and I guess what you... Just remember, USMC, United States Marine Corps, for me, you signed the mother contract. So like... That's that's what it means. Like, when you're in it, you're in it, and you're not getting out. You're not yeah. getting out early if you stub your toe and you're hurting or whatever. Like, no, you're staying in it, and it's it's difficult. But regardless, it definitely made me into the man I am today. So, yeah. I recommend it for certain people, but not everybody. Yep. I, and especially the people that kind of have like the victim mentality, or you know, like kind of get mad when they get their toe stepped on per se in life. Yeah. It's like. That ain't for you then because someone is down your neck telling you commands and you got to take it no matter what it is. Yeah. They got more rank on their shoulder. You got to listen. Yep. And unfortunately, if that's like a dumber person than you or you think that, you still got to do it. So. Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's insane. I mean, you, you, yeah, you were able to navigate it, I feel like, so well um, because like I feel like you were able to pull a lot of good lessons and habits out of there, yet you've been able to let go of some of the stuff that might not serve you. Which is tough. I feel like some people aren't able to, to let that go or they go and they see like intense combat and that, you know, for mm-hmm. a lot of people, that that's just tough on the brain. Well, um, so yeah. Dude, it's, it's honestly from therapy that's really helped me out with that big time. And it's like when you get out of the military and, and they don't really give up, they don't care about your mental health yeah. at all. Like no support. No support. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's like, in fact, when you're in, if you have like an injury, and you're still doing like this Marine Corps martial arts training or whatever, it's demonized. It's it's looked down upon if you were to go to medical or take mm-hmm. uh, um, a day off or whatnot. And it's like you, it's just, it's just unfortunate. They don't really care about you. And then when you get out, they, you have nothing. You, I mean, you do have your job bill to go to school and you have the VA that's free medical, horrible healthcare. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had to unlearn a lot of things that I learned in the Marine Corps um, especially for, with like inner work and stuff. Yeah. So I'm lucky I took a higher path, but not a lot of people do. I still know plenty of my military friends that are kind of in the same uh, uh, outtake of life, and mm-hmm. it's unfortunate. So I'm a huge advocate for therapy for inner work because that's really seen where a lot of my self-limiting beliefs stem from. A lot of the bad stuff I learned from the military, um, I've been able to unpack and to work through. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's good you did that. I mean, it's there is something like you know what I mean, uh, like um, that I like about you being a marine. Like if we're in Tahoe and it's like you know, like if we're in like the middle of nowhere, I'm just like, all right, I'd yeah. rather be with this dude than just yeah. some random dude. Like he he knows some shit. So For sure. There's definitely some like benefits of it, but yeah, I mean, you've been able to navigate it well, and 
I don't know. Yeah, that's why I say like people like with the military. It's like yeah, sure, uh, military is great. I support a military. I wish we supported them more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, like like. Uh, Can we take some of our tax dollars from the corn syrup <laughs> production and give it to, you know, uh, support for people after they leave the Army or Navy or Marine Corps? Like, yeah. Well, you got to think. So, like, for me, for instance, I was in the aviation. So, for my training, it was a lot of money for the Marine Corps to, like, pay for me to get trained. So, mm-hmm. I am, like, an investment into the military. So, they want to make sure that I'm fully functioning in. But when I get out, I'm not – I I have no help to them at all. So, they yeah. don't care. Like, they really don't care. Then they push you off into the veteran affairs, the VA health system, and see you later, pretty much. Yep. Uh, there's no, like, separation course or... Actually, there is a separation course where they help you build a resume, but that's it. Yeah. There's no, like, uh, tra- mental health transitioning or any, like anything like that. There is a bunch of nonprofits now, a lot of other veterans that are getting woody about this that are helping other vets transition out of the military. So yeah. that's beautiful to see, which are... It's just... The bottom level, other human beings helping other human beings. Yeah, but it's like you got to like know about those programs and be like proactive. Mm-hmm. If someone's like super down in the dark after they leave the military, yeah, good luck for them going and Googling and finding like programs. Like there needs to be more like proactive stuff for them and like more like kind of direct, you know, ability to, to help them out. But okay. yeah, and then, but what I want to also talk about is you mentioned the VA and our uh-huh. healthcare system. Um, I get a lot of messages from people being like, People get wrapped up in this healthcare system or they think that their doctor is like amazing. And I, I love our Western medical system for certain things. But overall, I think our medical system, it's like if you go to the doctor and you're like, hey, I feel pretty good. I don't have, you know, some crazy issue. I just want to feel better. Can you run some labs? Can you do this? They are of no help whatsoever. So like, I guess what what could we plan out for somebody right now if they like, are starting from zero and they want to like optimize themselves like what could they do because it's not going to be your normal doctor well dude i have so many things to talk about with like medicine and western medicine and especially like the va and stuff because it's like they don't treat the the cause of it they just treat the symptom you just and give people opioids i have and, pain here's opioids so like, it's insane. Yeah. yeah and like i know a ton of veterans that have transitioned to like natural remedies natural therapies natural plant medicine from 10 to 12 opioids a day because as soon as you get out of the military and you go to the VA and you say, I got a headache, I can't sleep at night, I have super bad anxiety, I can't go out in public, opioid. Yeah, well, and guess anxiety what? med, here's some Xanax and opioid. Mm-hmm. Like, and guess what? Way. I need another opioid to, to combat the symptoms that I'm getting from this one. And then, <laughs> and then I have stomach problems from this one, so now I need to take four. And then it's like they're so compounding on each other. It's so scary, honestly. Yeah. And what's really crazy is that Western medicine doctors... They only get like a semester worth of basic nutrition. Yep. So even then, it's like they aren't even taught the basic core principles of like humanity and nourishment. They're just literally taught like, okay, this medicine works best for this gut thing and this, you know, like yeah. it's so Yeah, they're, they're taught by the, the medicine companies and, they're, you know, our system's very good at trauma care. Mm. You know, it's like if, if I break my leg 100%, like Western medicine, give me those painkillers. System, they're great at that because a lot of our medical system evolved actually out of the, the world wars. Mm. Like that's where a lot of it evolved from. Mm-hmm. Um, but a clear example for anybody listening to this about how dumb our medical system is. No doctor would argue that having optimum vitamin D levels is good for human health. There's not a doctor out there in the world that would argue that. There are thousands and thousands of studies that having optimal vitamin D levels, the exact number is sure debated, but let's just say having good vitamin D levels, not having chronically low vitamin D levels is known to help depression. It's known to help your immune system. It's so well known that you can say these things and nobody will come at you for a medical claim because it's a fact. Mm-hmm. Vitamin, adequate vitamin D levels help depression. They help your immune function. They help your hormone function. Yet, why when anybody goes into a doctor, in your basic checkup, they should be doing a vitamin D test. They should be doing a full blood panel. Mm-hmm. But we could get into, de- they, you know, I'm sure they could debate, well, having optimal magnesium levels isn't that important. I think it is. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, it's pretty clear. The fact that everybody is not getting a vitamin D test is absolutely Mm. insane. It is is the easiest thing to fix in our healthcare system ever. Mm. The actual test is extremely cheap. If you pay for it out of pocket, it's often $25 to $40, depending on what state you're in. Mm. So you can imagine if that's subsidized by our healthcare system, it could be 
free. It could be mm-hmm. nothing. It could be a few bucks. Mm-hmm. And then you tell people, hey, if you're low, you take this vitamin D3 pill. Get some sun. Although, for some reason, we say the sun kills us. So just take the vitamin D3 pill, whatever. But the fact that that is not done for every single patient in the United States that goes into their doctor is a clear sign to me that the system is broken. Oh, most definitely. Uh, I love my aunt, and she is a dermatologist, but she believes the sun is horrible for you. And I get it because she takes off skin, like uh, basal cell carcinoma, like all this stuff, skin cancer off people all the time. And usually because they're baking in the sun. They're not yeah. getting like nice little generous amounts of it. But she even says, because she's been ingrained in this modern medicine, that the sun is horrible for you. You need to put on all this sunscreen every single day, even if you walk outside for five minutes from your car to work. Yeah. You need to have it's, some type dude, of... Dude, it's crazy. Uh, it's like, yeah, don't get burnt for sure. Don't right. get sunburned. Mm-hmm. If you're a very fair-skinned person, throw on a, a long sleeve shirt, throw on a hat, you're not going to get sunburned. When you see people walk around here in our neighborhood um, during the day that are covered Mm -hmm. in clothing, they have an umbrella, they have all this stuff, Mm -hmm. it is insane how they've convinced people that our star, the sun that we've evolved with for millions of years, if it touches your skin, you're giving giving yourself cancer. That's just not true. I did a whole podcast on the sun, and I believe in skin cancer. I think skin cancer Mm -hmm. is real. I think you shouldn't get sunburned. But to say, hey... Every time you go out, you need to put chemical-based sunscreen on and don't ever let the sun touch your skin is insane. And it's Mm -hmm. led to chronically low vitamin D levels in so many people, which is clearly, that actually does cause disease. Most definitely. So it's it's so crazy. Yeah, I get a lot of sun. I have slightly darker skin because of my mom's side. Mm -hmm. But even if I didn't, even if I had very pale white skin, I would get a little bit of sun Mm -hmm. every day. And just like anything... If you're new to the sun, like getting like daily sun, start generous, like start small and yeah, then work l- up from there. Yeah, five minute, you know, then increase it. Yeah. Don't go out there at 12 p.m. for two hours yeah. baking, you know, like little by little. And I think for a lot of people, especially to set our circadian rhythm to get off your freaking phone in the morning, because usually that's the first thing people roll over and look at. Go outside, look near the sun, look at it 7, 8 a.m. It's a good height during the day to where it's not like emitting so much spectrum of violet that it's like messing with your eyes or messing with your body but just get five to ten minutes yep it's really good for you you're gonna feel so much better and especially being off your phone and stuff because that blue light from your phone you're looking really close you're not looking like far in the distance Mm -hmm. it's so good for you yeah i mean 100 percent. like it is literally how our body knows what time of day it is Mm. we we absorb information from the environment around us and completely separating ourselves from that has been so dangerous. Mm-hmm. And like, I tried to get in the sun at multiple points throughout the day, but the most important for me is in the morning mm-hmm. and in the evening with sunset, I always take the dogs to the park with my girlfriend and we make sure to be outside during that sunset Amazing. time. And I try to plan everything around that because that is how your body knows what time it is mm-hmm. in the day. And we have this natural circadian rhythm. Why? Because we evolved for millions of years with, the with sun. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, and I'm sure you know the the haters in the comments or the appeal to nature fallacy people will say, well, we have lights. Lights are beneficial. Yeah, there's lights all around me right now. I use light, dude. Like, of course, you can benefit from these modern technologies, but it does not take away from the fact that we evolved this way. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe in forty, fifty thousand years, we'll start evolving. <laughs> You know, with blue light. If we make it, but yeah. yeah. If we make it that long. <laughs> but for right now, for 99% of the time that we've been on Earth, mm-hmm. we did not have artificial light. Right. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, you know how I am about artificial light. Uh, yeah. Well, I let do. me tell you. So, I, I think a general rule of thumb is we should wake up with the sun, not go to sleep with the sun, but like, you know, relatively a couple hours after sunset is probably a good time for you to go to bed. Yeah. Uh, you notice probably the natural circadian rhythm. You start to get tired when the, after the sun sets, you know. If you don't have a lot of light going on. This is mm. the thing with people. People are like, oh, I have sleep issues. It's like, dude, mm. you are blasting your eyes with light. Blue light. Yeah, especially. in the evening. Mm-hmm. And what does that tell The eyes are part of your brain, actually, and it sends a signal saying, let's suppress the hormone melatonin. Why would we suppress the hormone melatonin right now? Well, there's light. It's, mm-hmm. it's daytime out. We need to be alert because this is when you need to go get food. This is when you need to defend against predators. Mm-hmm. You need to be awake during this time because it's daytime. And then from there, you want to put your phone away, put the TV away, and go to bed. Mm-hmm. Then you go, damn, why am I? Why do I have trouble falling asleep? Your body hasn't been in the, in the condition and given it signals that it's had for millions of years that it's bedtime. Mm-hmm. This is why people need to lay there in the dark often for hours before they actually get tired. 
It's crazy. And it's just like your body hasn't secreted melatonin. Well, dude, most people are on their phone, are looking at a TV, are somehow like inundated by an electronic device to the moment they fall asleep. Half the Americans fall asleep with their freaking TV on. Yeah. With their phone in their hand, freaking drooling, you <laughs> yeah. know, snoring because they're overweight and their yeah. tongue's fat. They're not you know? breathing through their nose. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, if you can start small, like I said, good habits, get off your phone 10 minutes before bed mm -hmm. and then 30 minutes before bed and then an hour. Yeah. You know, and it's like these little things will help. And I'm telling you, they'll help so much. For me, a really big, small, helpful tip for me. I sleep with my phone outside of the bedroom. Mm. Unless I have to wake up on an alarm clock, which I need to get a manual alarm clock. Yeah. Uh, I sleep with outside my bedroom because one, I naturally wake up. I can't roll over and check my phone. I can't get inundated by all these endorphins, all this stimulus, the world sending all these notifications to me, social media, saying what the world's doing, comparing myself early in the morning. Yeah. I have to get my butt up, out of bed, move, make my bed, open the blinds, look at the sun. And then I can walk outside, look at the sun again. And it's like so helpful. I think these technology, this it's just so normal, normal size in our society to be on our phone or be productive and all this until right before bed. And yeah. it's not helpful at all. No, no, you got to have a wind down routine. And like, mm -hmm. you know, those basic things can help people. Then I obviously take it to the um, the maximum right now. Like I have a, I have a bedtime routine that's extensive. Like I, okay, so I stop eating. You know what I mean? I try to stop eating two hours before bed. I know people say three hours is the best, but I'm trying to bulk up right now, so I'm I'm eating. Um, I fire up the sauna, and I get in the sauna at like 185 degrees, and I hit a nice hot sauna. Um, and I'll admit I bring my phone in there for a few minutes, but it gets so hot it it, it forces me to not have my phone. That thing overheats. I just broke my iPhone. I think that's why. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So. You know, um, I'm without the phone most of the time there, and I'm just breathing, just, mm. you know, navigating the heat. I'm getting that thing as Amazing. hot as possible. You've been in that sauna a few times. Mm -hmm. Like, it is, it's nice. And then from there, I get into the shower. I do a cold shower. Mm. Um, and then what I do is I take certain supplements. So I take our deep sleep capsules to start to encourage my body to produce its own melatonin. They knock me out. I yeah. love it. Yeah, and I, I get, get that. Sleep. Yeah, I get that eyes heavy feeling. I take magnesium glycinate through our Santa Cruz magnesium caps. And that's going to, magnesium has been shown to help with sleep. Mm. And then from there, um, I start the bedtime routine. And the last thing I do, uh, my girlfriend gets into bed and she's like ready to go to sleep. And I go and I do, it's not even like a meditation because that word I feel like sways so many people mm. away. Like, man, that's a lot to like deal with. I literally have this like cervical pillow, this little like blue like neck pillow. I lie down and I just breathe you know, mm. and it could be sometimes it's six breaths minimum, mm. and sometimes it turns into you know ten minutes of meditation. And I'm like transported to another dimension. That's but like, amazing. It's stillness. Yeah, it mm -hmm. just starts with just breathing. I'm just breathing in my nose, breathing out my mouth, very slowly, mm -hmm. just feeling my belly rise and then fall. And mm. I do that every night, mm. and then I get into bed and I sleep very well. I I have my eye pillow. You know what I mean? I have it cold in the room, pretty cold. And I just go to sleep mm. and I sleep great. I've been having some of the best sleep in my life in the last year. Um, and That's then it, it also part of the sleep routine is the morning routine. Because when I wake up, I'm starting uh, hydrating, so what is stretching. Your so my morning routine, I wake up, I have my water next to my bed. I grab this water. I put some salt in it. And people go, why do you put salt in your water? That's that's going to feed your adrenal glands, all these minerals. Like your body needs salt. They're Let's literally... hydrate you. Yeah, there were wars fought over salt, people. Like, salt mm. is important. Mm. Um, so I put some salt in there, and I drink a good amount of water with sea salt. And then I go outside, so I'm getting that light on me. And then I start my morning stretching routine, which I do every single morning. And it's it's seven minutes of stretching. It's not some crazy thing. I've invented my own kind of, like, routine for what works with my body. What's some of the, the, the basic exercises? Yeah, so, like, I do, like, some bridges to, like, activate the glutes. I mm. do some hamstrings. And I do some ankle circles. Uh, so it's starting out uh, low, and then I move high. So then I'm doing, like, the triangle kind of pose and mm. yoga. And I'm warming up the low back with, like, cat-cow. I do pigeon pose, and then I move into the shoulders. So I'm doing like FRC swimmer, like arm circle things. Um, I'm doing like cobra pose, just getting like the shoulders mm. like pulled back and everything. And then I move into the neck, and I do like neck circles. Um, I do deep squat, and then like that's the morning routine. And that right there is so key, and I even do it when I travel. Like that right mm -hmm. there, hydrating and stretching, I do it when I travel. I do it wherever. You know what I mean? So 
that is key because it's just like I know what to do when I wake up. I don't have to think. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a routine. That's amazing. It's a great habit that you've created. And honestly, you've inspired me to get into morning stretching because I notice if I don't get in a walk immediately in the morning or if I'm not going to lift or go to yoga or surf in the morning, I am I am stiff. I am sitting down. I am sedentary and it's not good. I'm not activating my glutes, my posterior chain, my back, mm -hmm. my neck, none of that. So I, I think that's really important. I'd, I'd love to say my evening and morning routine because it's a little different, but it's similar. Yeah, tell me. Um, so one thing big about me with my evening routine is lights, lighting. Uh, Y'all know I'm, I'm a stickler about lighting, but <laughs> yeah. uh, my house, if you were to go into my apartment, is the living room has two pink Himalayan salt lamps. My room has two pink Himalayan I salt lamps. I love it. It's a vibe. Uh, it... it looks like a fire kind of because it's an, a glowing orange light it's mm -hmm. really dim it's not bright it still brights up the the nearby area enough to see what you're doing and to move around and to not stub your toe on anything but yeah but it's like normal it's like it's supposed to be dark right mm -hmm. now it's supposed to be dark so right automatically my body knows okay it's it's i'm gearing up for sleep it's time for sleep um and then i so i, I turn off all my lights and i try to also breathe and i also say things that i'm grateful for i try mm -hmm. to say five things i'm grateful for before bed it's huge and i try to massage my nasal like mm. cavity because yeah, yeah i don't breathe that well out of my nose because i think i have a deviated septum mm -hmm. but regardless uh i try to start my nasal breathing because if i don't i'll mouth breathe through the night yeah and for me you ever tried taping your mouth i i want to but Dude, i've been yeah I'll... i've been pretty good like weirdly enough like subconsciously when i'm sleeping i like will like feel that i'm breathing out of my mouth and i'll mm -hmm put my tongue up to my, the roof of my mouth mm -hmm. and start nasal breathing. Nice. Um, and I honestly, I eat sometimes right before bed. I swear to God, like I'll <laughs> eat like steak right before bed. Yeah. And I, I do fine. I process it fine. I'm different. I feel like my gut's very like, it processes a lot of stuff fine. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the morning, uh, the first thing I do is when I wake up, I make my bed. Nice. I think the simple thing of making your bed is how can you help the world if you haven't even freaking cleaned or made your room? Like, yeah. you know, like one thing about uh, an affirmation that I have for therapy is my internal condition reflects my inter my external. Mm -hmm. So if my mind and brain are crazy, you can guarantee my room is a mess, my kitchen's a mess, all this kind of stuff. But yeah. when I make my bed in the morning and everything looks good, clean, organized, it's easier for my brain to like, Okay, I did a good thing for myself. Yeah. Now let's do the next good thing for myself. It's like compounding those good little habits. When I make my bed, I open the blinds, boom, sun in my eyes. And then once again, salt water. Uh, sometimes I add a little squeeze of lemon or lime in it. And then I go right to my porch and try to look at the sun for at least five to 10 minutes. You're close to the ocean too. Smell yeah, that very ocean thankful. Air. Yeah. And then if I'm really good, I won't be on my phone for the first hour. Nice. Just because there's so much stimulation with that. I feel like... If I'm seeing what the world wants me to see on my phone, I'm not able to control my day as good. Mm -hmm. I'm much more worried about whatever Joe or Jan is doing freaking in Colorado than I am about my own day. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need to I need to get better at that. But I, I think that's like a good habit for people to hear at least. Yeah, 100%. I mean, dude, that's a, a beautiful routine. Mm -hmm. Dude, how much better would the world be if people just had a nighttime routine and mm -hmm. a morning routine? Whatever that means to them. Amazing. I assume when people make their nighttime morning routine, they're not going to make it something crazy like, you know, on, on do meth in the morning first <laughs> when I wake up. Like, no, it's going to be, you know, something beneficial. I mean, yeah. them, them endorphins from your phone are similar to, I'm sure, they meth are. and cocaine in small amounts. It's I interesting you say the, 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 the making the bed and, and keeping a, a clean area because they found that um, excessive clutter mm -hmm. increases cortisol levels. Like, they've done studies on that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, they put people in a room. It's very cluttered. They, this is like, yeah. And then, like, very minor clutter, like, doesn't seem to, you know. Like, right now, like, this table has, like, a charger here, has a remote here, mm -hmm. it has, like, this. But it's I like think, organized. Yeah, reading that study, they wouldn't say that like that is an increase in cortisol. But if you put like triple the amount of stuff, then it would be an increase in cortisol. So like, yeah, keep a clean environment. You don't have mm -hmm. to go crazy with it. Right. Just know where your stuff is and like keep a general clean environment. It's gonna help. Well, when you organize stuff, your brain is able to organize where it's at and to like know where it's at a lot better. And yeah. like even when I'm working, if the table I'm on is like really cluttered, I don't get as much done. I'm not as productive. I'm like very scatterbrained. But when my my workstation is really clean cut. I feel very focused and like, okay, I can like really get to it. Yeah. 
There's two things I want to talk about while it's still in my brain. One, coffee, because we're kind of talking yes. about morning oh, routine, yeah, yeah. and two, sunscreen. Yep. But let's start with coffee. I think uh, that's a huge thing. We were talking yeah. about this yesterday. I think, personally, the biggest drug in the world is caffeine. Yeah. Oh, the biggest everywhere. stimulant in the world is caffeine. For sure. And it how- is. I mean, so caffeine has benefits. It has absolutely there are benefits to caffeine. There's also some drawbacks. I used to drink coffee every single morning. And the reason why I did that is I would blend in healthy fats, um, some collagen protein often. It was a really good way to start the day with healthy fats, protein, and caffeine. And then when I, especially when I started animal-based, I had so much energy in the morning. I was like, why am I drinking this coffee? Like, I'm just kind of like slamming this down. Mm. Why am I doing this? So I started to eat basically leftover meat Mm. and fruit in the morning instead. And I felt amazing. You know, I felt great. So with that, now I use coffee as like a tool, like uh, when we went and surfed at 5 a.m. with Tanner, Mm. or we woke up at like 5 a.m. or whatever, like I had some coffee. It's like, okay, I am not against coffee or caffeine, but I do think it's up to every individual to have some kind of rules with it. Caffeine has a half-life of six hours or so. And what does that mean? So that means every, every couple of hours... The, ca- the caffeine's going to get out of your bloodstream. Mm-hmm. And by six hours, you're going to have half the amount of caffeine in your bloodstream. So so meaning if you were to drink coffee at 6 p.m., that would still be in your body till 100%. 11 midnight. Yeah, and, and the problem is when you have caffeine in the evening, it is going to affect your sleep. There mm-hmm. are so many people that message me, dude, I take my pre-workout with caffeine and I get good sleep. You might feel like you're getting good sleep. It would be better if you didn't have caffeine mm-hmm. in your system. It's just mm-hmm. a fact. There's so many studies on this. It's insane. Caffeine isn't good for sleep. No. Okay. Now, if you have coffee in the morning and you feel great and you're having a moderate amount, keep on drinking coffee. I think there's a lot of benefits of caffeine. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of polyphenols in coffee. I'm not an anti-coffee guy. I know Carnivore MD uh, talks about how he's anti-coffee. Um, there is an interesting topic of acrylamide in coffee, mm. um, which is a toxin and it's it's cancerous, mm. and there are issues with acrylamide in coffee, but the levels aren't very high. It's oftentimes more in the instant coffee, higher in those. So I wouldn't worry so much about that that I would like quit coffee completely. If you love your coffee, that's fine. What I would recommend to people is also though, like if you have chronically high cortisol and you just feel a bit of that, what's called adrenal fatigue, mm-hmm. which really just means like excess cortisol and other like neuroepinephrine and other hormones that your um, adrenals produce and and chemicals you might not want to do coffee if you're one of those people who's getting anxiety and feeling so jittery it's like you are you're screwing yourself by drinking coffee 100 Mm percent but um so yeah it can be used as a tool the other thing with caffeine which is so common is these kids doing these pre-workouts especially in the evening Mm mm-hmm most of you guys listening to this, if you're 16, 14, 15, 18, you're working out in the evening because you're probably busy during the day. Mm-hmm. If you, you're in your car before the gym and you're taking that pre-workout and that has you know 200 milligrams of caffeine and it's 4.30, 5 p.m., you are affecting your sleep, which is where your body produces its testosterone. Mm-hmm. You're going to hurt your recovery. So caffeine, I'm not anti-caffeine. Timing. So pre workouts hurting your gains. It is. It's hurting your gains. Hundred percent. And you know, people are like, "Well, I'm able to take it and go get like a really good workout because you're all juiced up off that caffeine." Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's not going to give you a better workout, but recovery is where the actual gains are made. Correct. So you're way better off. There's non-stim pre workouts, which almost all of them still have artificial sweeteners, mm-hmm. artificial colors. Legion of Boom, I think, is a really good one. It's uh, nice. Max, Max Lugavere's company, and he's like really about dude. clean yeah. ingredients. Yeah. So like, if you want to check out a non-stimulant pre-workout, that would be a good one. That's awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. You have to if you're working out in the evening. And also the, all the fillers and preservatives, like you're saying. But we were mentioning coffee, and coffee to us is organic, black beans, no sugar added. Yeah. No <laughs> yeah. anything yeah. else. Yeah. No plastic cups. No. Dude, normal people coffee is they go to Starbucks. They get a grande ice mm. pumpkin spice latte, which has, I have, I have no idea, 60 grams yeah. of sugar, 20 grams of fat, full of seed oils, full of just not stuff you want. And it's very little espresso. It's not going to be organic beans, yeah. anything like that. So like it's when we say coffee, yeah. we're talking really good coffee beans that we make at home yeah. that we're not outsourcing at some 
local run-of-the-mill coffee shop. Now, believe me, I love my local little mom and pop uh, coffee shops, but I'll get like an iced latte with whole milk, not oat milk, yeah. not freaking almond milk, soy milk, all this kind of stuff. So I just want you all to know that the coffee we're mentioning is not what you would see at Starbucks. Yeah, when I would say coffee, I'm referring to black coffee made from, you know, high-quality beans. Mm-hmm. Fair and trade. I'm, I'm mixing in some you know, grass-fed butter, maybe some of our Santa Cruz Medicinals MCT oil, maybe a scoop of our grass-fed grass-finished beef isolate protein. So I'm getting protein, fats, Mm -hmm. and some caffeine when I do have my coffee. Um, So yeah, but yeah, coffee's not bad, but it's one of those things that you do have to look into individually Mm -hmm. and be like, it's like, if you've been drinking it for five, six, seven, eight, nine years straight, try going without it for 30 days. Like this 30 day thing, like try something for Mm -hmm. 30 days of your life. Like it is not that long of your life to try mm-hmm. something like that. Like, go without coffee for 30 days. First four or five days for me sucked. Then it was fine. Mm-hmm. Didn't feel any negative effects from there. And then now that's just how my life is. I don't have to wake up and panic on where I'm going to get my coffee. It makes me also more, like, adaptable. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, oh, my God, I need to get my coffee in the morning. And I'm good. think about how expensive it is. You're spending four to six bucks on a drink every single day, almost 365 you yeah. know, and it's crazy. Now, I... I have plenty of energy in the morning, but I still love my coffee because habitually I like grinding the beans. It's, I like putting I the French press. I did miss the routine, but this... I've replaced it with a kind of another routine of like, I, I give Chudo a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the meat that I'm like reheating. Huh. He always now he gets as soon as I put that steak, you know, reheating. Dude, he's stoked. He gets stoked. I give him a little bit, and then I go on a little walk with him. But like, That's yeah, awesome. I think the routine of coffee is good. Um, I'm definitely not anti coffee, um, but yeah, timing. And we're talking Context. one cup a day. We're not talking two, three yeah. cups, that which is like the average. Honestly, yeah. like most people are consuming like two, three, 400 milligrams of caffeine. Like our homebrew is probably like 60, 100 milligrams yeah. of caffeine. 100%. So like we're not like relying on caffeine to get us through the day. How many people do you know doing sales and stuff? You know, the midday crash comes around and they reach for that third cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. To lift them up for two hours and Dude, then boom, it's crash. It's bad. Yeah. They're, they're not giving themselves any, their body any real fuel. You know, your, your cells, your mitochondria <sighs> makes energy and you're not like giving your body actual energy. You're just inflating all your like, mm. basically your panic hormones, mm-hmm. which are there for a reason. They also help us and work out and, you know, do many things. But like, you're just adrenaline mm-hmm. cortisol you know neuropinephrine just earns it's gonna your system breaks if you do that for too long. you're running off a substance you're not running off like your own body as natural mechanisms or yeah. nourishment really unfortunately yeah it's like dude like find energy within yourself like sometimes i'll go to the gym and i'll be like oh, I'm, i did a morning lift uh yesterday um mm-hmm. and i was like damn i'm like kind of tired you start working out you get pumped up mm-hmm. you can use other tools music movement mm-hmm. and you know Honestly, just Mm self-talk. That's so huge. I feel like people are just like so like weak mentally nowadays that they'll sit in their car before evening workout like I'm tired and have to watch a hype video on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like, dude, just tell yourself like like, I have energy. I fueled myself myself well. well, I'm going to go crush this workout. This is going to make me a better person doing this rather than sitting in the car. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so many people like they think of the gym and it's got to be hype. It's got to be motivational. You got to be jacked. You got to lift heavy. Listen to your body. If you're not feeling like that well today, take it easy. Do some like mobility mm-hmm. flows, you know, not do some heavy compound lifts. Like listen to your body. The top bodybuilders in the world have programmed rest days. Mm-hmm. So just think about that. All the top athletes have programmed rest days. It's essential for having high testosterone to rest. Mm-hmm. Our bodies aren't designed to work out every single day of your life hard. There would be days where we had to do very hard activities and days where it was just kind of like active rest, a lot of Mm -hmm. walking, just like basic movement, you know? So yeah, from an anthropology point of view, again, like it wouldn't be right to work out hard every single day. So don't ever do it. Um, The next thing you want to get into is sunscreen. Yeah, most definitely, man. I mean, you brought up a a light in my mind when you're talking about like kids and like their parents just lather them up with sunscreen and like... Dude, I saw a guy in SF... (laughs) He was spraying his kid. And dude, it's SF. It wasn't even that hot. Like, the sun, like, barely... He's spraying his kid with some chemicals. Kid's inhaling it. it dude, when you yeah. smell this aerosol sunscreen, it smells bad. It smells like your body naturally is like, whoa, like, yeah. what is that? If it like, touches your eye, it's going to burn the shit out of your eye, too. So, it's like, what? chemical sunscreens, aka 90% of big brand sunscreens out there, have things like oxybenzone, avobenzene, homosalate, uh, there's six 
really common known ingredients mm-hmm. in these big brand sunscreens that are known to cause cancer. Yeah. That is wild to me that a something that is marketed as, you know, help you from the sun causes something that yeah and I, I, what i really like to see um when dr andrew huberman was talking about it with Rhonda patrick because these are people that are pretty straight edge mm-hmm. they're not going to go on the fringe of hey you should eat a lot of like grass-fed beef which is some, somehow that's fringe but um they they're this is a stanford neurobiologist and mm-hmm. he has a clip that went viral where he's like i am very concerned about the compounds and chemical-based sunscreens mm. because they cross the blood-brain barrier. And Dr. Rhonda Patrick echoed that too. She's like, that, that's not good. Like, I need to look into that because these these compounds have, they're, they're carcinogenic. Mm. I mean, it's insane that people are just using these daily and rubbing their body with avobenzone, oct- you know, oxybenzone, mm-hmm. octocrylene, and they're thinking that they're going to have good health with that. It's not good. And there's a much better option, which if you could tell people about the mineral-based sunscreens. Most definitely. And so how chemical-based sunscreens work is they, one, they go and penetrate deep in your skin, and then they go into your, they cross the blood brain barrier, and they go into your blood, and they systemically block the sun. They they, they, yeah, they deflect... basically like radiate heat mm-hmm. out of your body. And it's very strange. So mineral-based sunscreens, so something that doesn't have the, you know, the common ingredients that we just listed... Uh, usually the good brands are made of non-nano zinc oxide. Mm -hmm. And how that works is when you apply it, it stays on the top of your epidermis, the top of your skin, and it reflects the UVA, UVB rays off of you. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really go into your body. It just stays on top of your skin, acts as an Iron Man suit, yeah, Yeah. if you will. Um, And, you know, a really good sunscreen is going to have ingredients that you can pronounce. Yep. If you look at a normal sunscreen, the big brand sunscreens, Try pronouncing any ingredient. Yeah, that, it's insane. Like 30... The list is so long, and it's crazy. The active ingredients are known to be carcinogenic, and there's constantly recalls. There was just a recall um, of Banana Boat and Neutrogena, some other big brands for containing benzene, which is a known carcinogen. Mm-hmm. So much so that our FDA, which is in bed with these companies, they're like, "Hey, you have to do a recall." That's how bad it is. That's yeah, that's bad when the FDA. We has to do that. we will one hundred percent look back on the ingredients and chemical based sunscreens and say, wow, we did something completely wrong here. Mm -hmm. We were having people lather up with these substances and they were carcinogenic. Mm -hmm. They gave people cancer and there's a much better option with mineral based sunscreen. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying don't wear sunscreen, use a mineral based sunscreen, Mm -hmm. use a natural brand. And the other thing is throw on a long sleeve shirt. Mm -hmm. Like when I go to Costa Rica and I surf, I'll go in the water with a t-shirt. That's my sunscreen right there, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll use a mineral-based sunscreen sometimes. Like, Well, when you eat well, too, your, your body emits almost like a natural sun protectant. Yeah. When you're eating these seed oils and stuff, it absorbs, you know, the, the UVA and UVB a lot easier, which is not good for you. But be careful. Some mineral-based sunscreens still add in oxo or oxybenzene mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And it's like, be careful. Just read the main ingredients on the back. Yeah. And if you can't pronounce most of them, it's probably not good for you. That's kind of my rule of thumb. Um, but like Sunbum, unfortunately, they're a San Diego company that smells great. But even their mineral-based sunscreen has homosalate in it, mm-hmm. oxybenzene. I'm like, what? Yeah, it's Come crazy. On. So, so be careful of the marketing for mineral-based. Really check and see what is in there first. Yeah, companies so. will hop on trends. And I was just reviewing a keto cereal that had the like seed oils in it and just like horrible ingredients. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, like we don't we don't want that at crazy. all. You know, it's like, it's just insane. Um, when does your sunscreen drop? You're going to drop sunscreen? Well, so, dude, I've, how I know a lot of this information is doing so much extensive research on sunscreen. Yeah. It is hard to get in the sunscreen game yeah. because you have to pay thousands of dollars to have it tested by the FDA yep. to see what type of SPF rating it offers, this and that. And, um, you know, making your own sunscreen at home seems easy, right? But no, it's really hard because the non nano zinc oxide, when you put it in a formula, the the spreadability i forget the term the vocab word um but basically how it spreads out into the formula it can clump up Mm -hmm. so like if you spread it evenly on this table there might be non-nano zinc zinc oxide really heavy in this part but not this part Mm -hmm. so like it's really hard to get a natural mineral sunscreen to be effective so uh really look for ones that have been fda tested and Mm -hmm. approved um so currently I am. I have put on pause making the natural organic uh, mineral-based sunscreen because it's 
so in depth. Yeah, the FDA has just a lot of block. That's why a lot of companies that do make um like non nano zinc, uh, like I have one that's just beef tallow and non nano zinc. I'm sure if you just Google beef tallow non nano zinc sunscreen, mm-hmm. that like a couple brands will show up. But uh, they have to just market it as um a uh, sun bomb, mm. now, something like that, because it's like they can't put sunscreen right yeah. yeah it's illegal yeah the the natural stuff i use is called a sun stick it can't be called sunscreen now i'm still wary about that stuff because the every single ingredient that you add into this non nano zinc oxide formula whether it's something for spreadability like coconut oil or shea butter it's going to affect the spf yeah so every time you make modifications to that formula you have to get it kind of retested for the spf rating which is thousands mm-hmm. of dollars so that's why i've kind of pulled my uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, the they market. have a, they have a, a kind of you know I'm sure the sunscreen companies Procter and Gamble owns a lot of them like they mm-hmm. lobby to to keep you know of course keep a good hold of it but yeah I mean you just have to be very careful about the consumer products that are out there that's why I make so many of those videos in the grocery store and mm-hmm. we just saw today there was a major recall of some hairsprays because of again that cancer causing mm-hmm. compound benzene mm-hmm. and I've been talking about those products forever and it's always good to see well it's not good to see but it, whenever there's a major recall you know CBS News has stuff on end mm-hmm. it's a big oh people always come back to my page and go dude i hate it on you i said you're stupid for holding up this shampoo and warning people about <laughs> it you were right wow and it's good to see skittles had a um, big lawsuit for containing titanium dioxide mm. um which you shouldn't be eating titanium dioxide <laughs> a heavy metal no. yeah can't wait to yeah okay eat some titanium dioxide it's like what um but they got sued, and a lot of people came to my video that went viral of Skittles, mm-hmm. and they were like, dude, like, my bad. You're, wow. Yeah, you were right. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's facts. Titanium dioxide or aluminum, I want to talk about that because that is huge in anti, uh, antiperspirant deodorants. Yeah. To be an antiperspirant in America, you have to have the ingredient aluminum. Yeah, now, because you block, you, you block the body from sweating. It now, clogs now, the pores. Yeah. Do we think that's a good idea, people? Do we want to block the body from sweating? The it's natural... major detoxification process and cooling down process of the human body. Do we want to block that? No. No. I think, you know, there's a lot of good natural deodorant brands out there and people will say, oh, they don't work as well. Yeah, that's probably right. Because it's not supposed to work like that. And if you eat right, and if you sauna, and if you exercise, you're not going to stink like so vile. Mm-hmm. You'll have natural, like a natural body odor, which I think is fine. But mm-hmm. I understand if you're a young kid at school, whatever, use a natural deodorant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't cover up your sweat ducts with aluminum. Please. No. Yeah. And a lot of why certain people stink, you know, like really bad is because of their diet. Yeah, is because of the bacteria and their gut microbiome, and that's one of the biggest places of secretion is your armpit, mm-hmm. and so that's where a lot of smell happens. You know, so it's wild that a lot of Americans or people in general rub a heavy metal into their most absorbent part of their skin. Yeah, their yeah and there, there's there's studies, uh, you know, showing a possible connection between aluminum and breast cancer mm. because for women, like their very sensitive uh, lymphatic system of the breast is right there, um, and for men, you know, this is a major lymph node area. Um, as well so like Mm -hmm. you want to be careful about all these things i mean look the simple fact guys is these companies procter and gamble johnson and johnson they're trying to make a product that works the best they are not trying to make a product that works and is also taking into account your health that Mm -hmm. is not the goal the goal is to make a product that works well Mm -hmm. so if that means adding an artificial fragrance or an artificial dye or doing something for your health that's bad they do not care. No. And you know what? It, what I think is we just need more consumer education and people can vote with their dollars. I'm not here to say ban these products or whatever, you know, ban soda, whatever. I just think, and I know that these companies are trying to make a product that, let's say soda, tastes good, you know, has a good mouth feel. So mm-hmm. they might add some like, you know, weird stuff. They might add a fake artificial caramel color. So it looks like that Coca-Cola mm-hmm. that you know and love. The goal is not, hey, we should look out for people's health. You get laughed out of a, a Coca-Cola meeting if you're like, sure. hey, like maybe we should make a product without the caramel color. Yeah. It's just not in their lexicon no. of ideas. It's it's profit over people, unfortunately, and that's why they've gotten so big is because they only care about the bottom dollar. Yeah. And you know, look at the advertising on any products. Is it saying like, is it marketing as all natural, you know, sustainable, great ingredients, or is it saying like? tastes great yeah 20 more ounces than this one you know it's yeah. like they're trying to make it as most efficient and as cheap as possible and then of course reoccurring they're trying to get their customer hooked yep whether it's an antiperspirant deodorant that 
you don't smell for 18 hours or is it a coca-cola bottle that all that sugar is bringing you back reoccurring customer yeah they're, they're constantly going to have you in their pockets they're doing a good job but we're fighting back, brother. We are, man. We're, we're fighting. fighting the, we're hard. fighting the good fight, and I, I hope I, you know, I really feel like there's a big awakening, uh, slowly in society, whether it's about you know nature or the environment or what we consume, mm-hmm. or you know just modern, uh, societal like advertising. Yeah. And I, I really think that slowly people are starting to really wake up to the fact that most of what modern society does is not good. Facts. And hundred percent, dude. I completely agree. It's true. I mean, like, yeah. It's crazy, though, how much, like, I can speak for you, too, how much hate we get, though. And it's, like, wild. It's, like, I'm trying to, like, preach to you, like, something that's relatively healthy. Like, I got so much hate on hating or uh, saying why Jif isn't as good as this natural, like, Santa Cruz peanut butter. Yeah. And it's, like, why are you sticking up for Jif? Like, what what are you getting out of this? It's what's in their pantry at that moment, and they don't want to feel bad about going Mm. and, and eating that. And, you know, people bring up the price thing. I mean, look. For some reason with food, people will look at a Kim Kardashian post where she's dipped out in $50,000 worth of bags, jewelry, and clothing and getting into a $250,000 car, and they won't go crazy on that. But if I say, hey, yeah, you should probably spend a little bit more on your food, supplements, health overall, people will freak out. So when I'm talking about something that might be $1,000 a month you know, for this like lifestyle, whatever mm-hmm. it is. So, yeah, my page is going to show stuff that costs money and is a bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, And to get hate for that, it's insane. Or You know what? If you're somebody that wants to hate on that, go comment on your favorite rapper's thing saying, oh, my God, why are you wearing a $50,000 chain? Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's crazy. So yeah, I think that's a big thing for people is the price. They go, well, that Santa Cruz organic peanut butter is is six dollars, and the GIF is three. It's like, yeah, for sure. I, I just say yeah, yeah. No, to- like when people are like, it's more expensive. I go, yeah. And what I say to is. them is, you know, your health is your wealth, and you're either gonna spend the money now or you're gonna spend it later in doctor bills and not feeling healthy and not living your highest self. Yeah. So it's like really like what what are you doing do you want to live like eh, so so and eat crappy food and you know maybe when you're 60 70 have a lot of problems yeah that you now suddenly have to rely on this western medicine opioids to get you through another five years yep or a lot of people are at yeah it's unfortunate or you can spend your money on really prioritizing yourself yourself you know your support system your your own body you know the the one vehicle that gets you through this life yep your own freaking body that and your brain too, your mental health as well, that you can feel not only great externally, but internally and just help yourself be a better person. And then that also raises the collective. That also helps so much other people too. Being in this room, being around my really good supportive friends, I level myself up because I'm around people that, my senior drill instructor said this to me, well not said, screamed this at me, iron sharpens iron. And that's so freaking true. And it's like, you are the top five people that you hang out with the most. You 100%. resemble them. So it's like, do you want to be around people that bring you down? You want to bring, be around food that brings yeah. you down? Or do you want to, you know, wake up and start to consume better stuff, do better stuff, do better for yourself, do better for the environment, do better for your family, your friends? It feels good. It does. I feel great. I feel fucking great. You know, great and it's, it's like, I want to share this to other people. Yeah, you can that, feel this. Hundred percent, dude. That's been my big thing. It's like, dude, it's it's the change you can make in thirty days mm-hmm. is absolutely insane. So, yeah, man, I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming up here. I'm gonna come Hell visit yeah. you in San Diego soon. Um, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on you know the gram, TikTok, organic underscore Tarzan, organic Tarzan. Let's go. Uh, I'm slowly starting to create a little side brand that makes really good ingredients for not only yourself, but the earth as well. So such as natural deodorant, uh, bamboo toothbrush, stainless steel tongue scraper, Mm -hmm. shower water filter, you know, how bad tap water is, you know, just getting... Gotta have a filter on your shower. Yeah. So just stuff um, that I think I use on the daily that's really good for me and the earth. I just want to offer it to other people. I love it. And um, if anybody wants to surf with us, I'm going to try to go down to San Diego in November. So Mm. DM organic underscore Tarzan. Be like, yeah, I'm trying to surf with you guys in San Diego, and we'll try to get a crew out there. Yeah, that would be sweet, man. Yeah. That'd be really cool. We could make a uh, whole we'll content charge out of some it. waves, yeah. dude. What's, what's coming up in your book? Anything? With Santa Cruz, um, Paleo? Santa yeah, Cruz I mean, uh, we're working on our creatine right now. Um, creatine supplement I take every single day, and 
I like the capsules because I'm traveling, I'm on the go, I'm taking it here. Mm-hmm. So I like the capsules. We're trying to make a creatine capsule with no fillers because mm. Optum Nutrition is the most popular one and has magnesium stearate in it, which isn't there to benefit you at all. It's just to benefit the <laughs> machine. So we're working on that. We're going to see if we can pull that off. A lot of people say they don't have access to beef tallow. So we're trying mm. to work with some farms and get a grass-fed, grass-finished beef tallow package in glass. Mm. That would be amazing to have mm. on Amazon. So we're working on some stuff. Um, type in Santa Cruz Paleo on Amazon to check out our formulas, to check out all of our CBD stuff. Go to Santa Cruz Medicinals on Instagram or scmedicinals.com. And that is that. Austin? Hell yeah. I got to say, creatine is the most like highly researched supplement. It's the and best. It's, it's the best for you. So I just, I'm stoked for that product. Can't wait. I, I'm shameless myself plug. I love the deep deep sleep caps. Dude, they're, the they're like when I know that I've had like a high activity day and I need like help calming down and going to sleep and just... Having really restful rest, deep sleep caps, 30 minutes before bed, two of them. The Oof. best, bro. You're out. And then also, I want to say nootropic caps as well. Yep. It's it's better than a cup of coffee because I don't have any of the jitters. I don't have any of the, like, the small anxiety that I yeah, get sometimes. Dude, I'm, those are those nootropic capsules that we make with Santa Cruz Medicinals. I don't know if there's a bottle there of them. Probably not. Mm-mm. But uh, those are made out of frustration with other nootropics that are just caffeine-based or mm. stimulant-based. Fillers. I feel like I need a like a calm, creative energy, and when I take two of those nootropic capsules, that's what I get. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like I'll grab our Santa Cruz nootropic caps before like a big task, pop two of them, and I get that calm yet like centered mm-hmm. energy, which is so different from all the other nootropics where it's stimulant-based. Mm-hmm. Like let's crank up like the choline in your brain. It's like... No, like, let's, like, relax, yet get mm. focused. So, yeah. yeah, I love that. And one last thing, the uh, Santa Cruz beef isolate protein. That's definitely, and I'm not getting paid to say this. This is definitely my favorite protein I've ever tried. One, it tastes really good. Two, it mixes really well. Three, it's from grass-fed beef, yeah. which is hard to find. And believe me, if you find a grass-fed beef protein out there, it's probably full of fillers or heavy metals that aren't tested because yeah. it's an unregulated market. Four ingredients. Mm. You know? And so I, I love that stuff. I try to eat whole foods, but when I can't, especially on the go, dude, the beef isolate protein is fire. Yeah. Love y'all. Keep it up. Keep following this, man. We, we're we just trying to raise the collective. We're trying to be healthier. Absolutely. And yeah. you're doing it. Love Much you, Much love. Peace. Yeah.